What up, my fellow Survivor lovers? Welcome to Survivor Historian, part of the Challenge Historian podcast feed. I am your host and born-again Survivor superfan, Jacob Hollaball, and with me as he is every week, or at least every week that we manage to show up on your feeds, is the great and powerful Tony Lance. Tony, how are we doing this week? Not too bad at all. It is about five and a half hours since I recorded a double episode, finished recording, double episode of the challenge so i'm right back into another double episode i had not even remembered that yeah you would have restarted challenge uh fandom episode recaps with all stars coverage this week. wow okay so you did you did you go to sleep or did you just stay up stay up through the whole night i slept from about quarter to five until about seven thirty or eight. Oh my goodness okay well you know <laughs> So that's the that's how we're entering this show. But thankfully, we have two great episodes of Survivor to talk about. So that'll yeah, re-energize yeah. us. And we both, of course, have plenty of caffeine uh, around us and available to us. So we will power through the episode. I also did not sleep a ton, but uh, more than that and didn't have as good of an excuse for not, <laughs> not having slept as much as that. We are here after missing last week. Apologies for that. But... Uh, we are not going to skip episode six talking about it because it's too important of an episode. So we are here today to discuss both episode six and episode seven, essentially because much to the dismay of folks like myself and Tony, that was an elongated limbo merge. So it actually works out well to discuss these episodes somewhat in tandem. So we're going to do full review. Mostly we'll, we're going to try to be is you know quick as we can be which you know is yes. not very quick for us uh through <laughs> episode six at least and save anything that carries over for episode seven and then we'll only do one batch of awards and predictions and questions and things at the end today and those award winners could come from episode six or from episode seven a lot of competition for quote and moment and mvp this week um tony as you referenced uh recording last night so challenge fandom all-stars challenge coverage kicking back up anything else to be on the lookout for on the challenge fandom front i think right now we're doing like straight time recaps every week obviously because it comes out every week but yeah i don't think we have i don't think we have any interviews in the hopper um right now we are just doing straight up recaps which is kind of like a return to the old school days of challenge fandom podcast. Yeah, I love it. And same on this front. Uh, yeah, just all stars recap Wednesday, midday to afternoon on this feed for the time being. And then Tony and I, of course, will, I hope last week should be the last time we miss. Uh, I will stop messing around with my schedule over here. We will make sure we get you survivor coverage every weekend. The rest of the season, which is what, like four, five more episodes? It's like usually 11 or 12 episodes. And yeah. This was episode I seven. Think, I think we're right in that ballpark. So we've got probably about like a month, month and a half. Yeah. I feel like I saw somewhere May 20 something was the finale, announced finale. So yeah, I think we got maybe five episodes left after this and so yeah thanks as always for being here subscribe here subscribe over at challenge fandom and without further ado let's dive into episode six of survivor 46 so again we are going to cover the whole the majority of episode six we're going to keep it kind of a couple key storylines so anything we skip over may come up during the episode seven coverage or just maybe for time you know not quite as pertinent so it won't be the full entire walk through the episode we typically do let's start with the fact that as anticipated and expected and uh if you listen to our coverage of the prior season you would probably know where our opinions on or i'm pretty confident i know tony's opinions match mine they get the merge note, but it does not use the word merge. It does not say they are merged. It does not come with buffs. They just all head to Nami's camp, which I do appreciate that they at least got to go to Nami's camp, who had obviously the awesome camp. And they all go, and they are on one beach, but they are not merged, and they are eventually split up into two teams for the challenge. But they do get to stay as one tribe on the same beach and all vote together by the end of the episode. So high level format wise, Tony, was this an improvement in no. your eyes or were you still <laughs> mad that it wasn't just an immediate like, why can't they just merge and all vote together and compete together like immediately? Yes, 
Um, I, I don't like it at all. I never have. Um, the only thing that I appreciate about this is they dropped their buffs before they left their camp. So when they got there, because normally it's drop your buffs at the challenge. But in this case, they did that. So then they kind of prolonged the actual lead up to it. So everybody was sitting around getting to know each other. It gave people the opportunity to either not say enough or say too much. Because really, you don't know if you're merged. It reminded me of um, Xi'an on Thailand, where they all went to the same beach, but Jeff never said merged, and they never got buffs. Like, they did not merge, and she basically said, I'm switching, you guys are all assholes, I'm gonna go with this other tribe. And then found out at the next challenge that they were not merged, that they were still two separate tribes. Um, Venus did a little they bit of that. They showed that moment recently, right? Did they show I think a so, yeah. back to that? During this Possibly. season, or last season, because I yeah. that I could see that in my mind. I'm like, I didn't watch that. Like, I don't have knowledge that season, but I, yeah, I think they referenced that recently. For reference, it's my least favorite season out of all of Survivor. So that's oh, saying man. something. Survivor yeah. Thailand. Yeah. Oh, it's, that's a bummer. Thailand's always done so well on the challenge as a location. So it's interesting. Absolutely rife with unlikable characters, and there's like oh. maybe one or two that aren't. Um, I'll check it out. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the <laughs> I've I've established having like talked about this a little bit, uh, both with like the people we watch Survivor with, and then some people in the Brain Candy Discord. Um, to me, the, these two episodes are not a merge. What they are is a series of tribe swaps. So you've got this episode where half the people are safe, half the people are not, which basically means two tribes competed, one tribe lost, one tribe won. Except everybody goes to tribal council and they vote somebody out. They've done that before. But then the other thing is, like, to jump ahead with this week, we've got two more tribe. Like, we've got another tribe swap. There's an immunity in each tribe. Each tribe goes to tribal council. That's really the only difference, is both tribes go, but somebody's safe in each. So these are not, this is not a merge. We have not experienced a merge, and I don't care what Jeff or production or anybody else says. It's not a merge until everybody's on one beach. Everybody has the same buff. There's like one person, maybe two, who are immune, and everyone else is up for grabs. That to me is when the merge happens. Yeah, and I just feel like I don't, I don't have any hope that they're going to do that again until fifty no. at the earliest. Like I think we're, I think we're set with this format. And it was at least the last couple of seasons they've done what episode seven is this week's episode of the yeah. you're all on the beach but you're in two teams and you then go back to different beaches and vote separate they've done that first i think uh they kind of like flipped the order of how they did this kind of in limbo section and so i was encouraged during episode six that it was like well at least they're all voting together on one person because that's the part yeah. that i care the most about is just like i want 13 people to all vote together if they find that more interesting than constantly be putting back in a group of five or six um and so obviously yeah looking ahead to episode seven um uh, not not a huge fan of that but staying with episode six then so they're in the two teams for the challenge and there's one person the odd person out which ends up being tiffany i believe who has to pick and her pick is easy to some degree or as jeff would say is very easy because the team's as far as physical stature go are quite lopsided yeah. and they don't just say this at the beginning. Jeff doesn't just ask a question, which of course like he's going to when they, it shakes out that way. He throughout the entire challenge is like, I think I wrote some of it down in my notes. He's like yelling during throughout it. Like, this would be such a huge upset. I can't predict what will happen this is the most lopsided draw we've ever seen. Like he's like talking it up. Like it's actually like, it's just, it's Jonathan by himself from season, whatever that was that I always reference versus like, I don't name the worst, you know, Jelensky or something from this season. Since he gets so many shout outs, I'll give him one too. I don't know, like one-on-one -on -one and something where you're like, okay, that's actually lopsided yeah. like this. They're, there's some physical the size is definitely an, a somewhat of an advantage in this but like i don't know i didn't see it when they drew it i was like i get why you make this comparison look how tall they are it's most of the guys it's most of the women over here whatever but it seemed a little over the top that they were like jeff was so in on like what an upset this would be how lopsided like you guys suck they're awesome yeah, i yeah. can't believe you're keeping up with them 
But then, like, almost immediately, they started, like, outpacing the larger tribe, like, when they were doing that net. They were winning most of the time. Yeah. They were actually ahead. It came down to a couple of pieces. Um, the other thing, like, for me, what's easier to call, like, for Tiffany, is the fact that all of the rest of Yanu is on the other tribe. Like, on purple. So, to me, it's a non, like, it's a non-issue. I'm going to purple. Because the rest of my tribe is there. Even before you look at, like, the breakdown. And I would I would probably go with orange. Now, whether that means that it would play out exactly like this and I would lose, whatever. Um, it's, it's a more... There's enough of a level playing field in this challenge that even if you get a little bit behind in the physical side of it, you still have to do that puzzle, which is arguably one of the harder puzzles. Although they did make it a bit easier by like having sections that people did rather than having access to to everything. Yeah, I wish the puzzle should have been just two people do it, here's all the pieces. It did make it a lot easier when it's like, okay, this is a 20-piece puzzle that's pretty hard, as you say, when it's all together, but when it's six pieces, eight pieces, whatever it is, like at a time in a section, it's not it's, you know, it's pretty quick to go through like trial and error just to put it together versus even like knowing how to put a puzzle together the only other thing i'll say about the challenge is it comes up multiple times a season i don't maybe i'm crazy the the bouncy net that they have to slide slash bounce down yeah terrifying is so unsafe why do they use this thing it is yeah. in like i thought multiple people were going to get hurt it's just a broken neck or back like waiting to happen it, absolutely every time they use it so often and i'm always like you can't it's not a slide like build a fucking slide like that yeah. is a, like death trap waiting to happen what are you doing it's and it's terrifying because like you're watching people go down feet first and all i'm thinking every single time is somebody's foot is going to get caught in one of those squares and they're going to get launched forward into the sawdust or their legs just going to stay there and they're not yeah, and it's just in the natural motion, which everyone, thankfully, no one, like, does. But, like, the moment you bounce in one of that, the natural motion is, like, to start doing a front flip. It's, like, propelling you in that direction, which, like, no, you don't need to be trying to do flips down the thing anyways. Yeah, so that's a small thing. Jeff, please stop using that. Uh, Survivor is not a show that I, you know, they take safety very seriously. And it, that that is one thing that stands out is, like, that doesn't seem to match the rest of your safety standards for no. like what are the probabilities someone could get hurt the opposite of a safety net it. yeah um so yeah the one side wins the other loses they all go back to the beach and it is a bummer that i mean i'm glad uh tiff picks the right side um and is safe and as you say it's definitely it's the right side just purely because in that scenario you want to be with like my tribe my tribe i came with the three of us could be all of you know half of one group or i could be singled out on the other that's an obvious pick and they do across both episodes they start to get the luck starts to come on their side um because in the next episode that we'll talk about they obviously the three of them end up in the same group again with all of the power so uh things really had turned in vanu's favor but we get then to the scramble and it is all together even if it just the only thing that stinks about Tiff picking the right team is like yes, all like twelve or thirteen of them are gonna go and vote, um, but it's you know less than half of them are up for possible elimination because she picked the winning side. But the during the scramble, it really comes down to two people. It's you know with the the beginning of the episode when they're all on the beach together, it starts out you know Nami versus Siga. We're gonna ignore Vanu as we've seen happen for the team that gets decimated the last two, three seasons in a row, they then become the power brokers in the middle because everyone is so in this shortened game is so stuck on tribal lines and Nami is quick in the early parts of the episode. And in this portion of the episode at the end to like, we'll say a name. We'll all say Venus. That's our offering. Every all, all you, we make an offering. You make an offering. Sega won't do it at the beginning. And then afterwards, the first time we get a name from them during the le the winners get to eat um, some food, have a little feast. And Tevin, again, is just like, I'll say Venus. You guys say a name. And finally, Tim relents and says Mo. And it comes to light that throughout the first half of the episode, Mo has been willing to say it was a unanimous vote last time. 
you know, Sega's all, we're all in lockstep. Everyone's, you know, the good, the vibe tribes, the whole thing. She's sticking with what was the case up until that vote and not letting everyone know I was actually on the bottom. I was left out. And in this moment, Tim says, you know, Mo could be the one to go. She eventually finds out about that, but she doesn't say anything until tribal council about being actually like, we've all been lying to you. I'm on the outs. I'm the one that could flip. Do you think, what did you think about the initial part of the open of the episode where she's like chill about it? And then like agrees the moment they go to the beach of like, we're going to keep this a secret. Do you think this was good strategy, bad strategy? Are you comfortable talking about Mo getting removed from the game eventually here? I know we, as you had a very funny text, you know, had some time to mourn um, this one here. uh, What did you think about Mo's and Siga's strategy throughout this episode? I think it's the right strategy to have. If you come in with a really solid group and you're unbreakable that, and you have like a decent number, then you can still go in because nobody wants to be on the wrong side of that first vote. Um, I think that Ben had the better idea at the feast than Tim, which was simply to say, we had to go to tribal. It was our first time going to tribal. We took out the person that was least trusted in the group, which was Jem. We don't have another person. Plain and simple. Like, Nami has not gone to tribal. So it makes sense that they have a name to throw out. Siga just went. So they can easily say, like, that was the person we didn't trust. We got rid of that person. We are now five strong. Plain and simple. And that should have been the end of the conversation. Like, I I really wasn't jiving with the whole everybody saying, well, you need to say somebody. There's clearly somebody on the bottom of your alliance. And like, they literally went to tribal council two nights ago right before yeah, the march or, like yeah, i guess it was two nights yeah yeah because it was, it like was six hours yep. yeah because it was the night of tribe like the night of day 11 and then day yeah. 12 they fake merge to a beach yeah and then That's day 13 thing. all of this happened um i also like q doesn't understand aubrey's game um which was frustrating because that's one of the main components of Mo being taken out was because first off, just because you like somebody as a fan does not mean that you play like them. Like Malcolm, absolutely my favorite survivor player of all time. I can't play like Malcolm. That's very obvious to me. I can still like Malcolm and I can still like how he plays the game and what he's capable of, but I can't do it. So for him to be like, Oh, Well, she's, Aubrey has glasses, Mo has glasses, they have the similar hairstyle, different colors, clearly she plays exactly like Aubrey, and this was a tell, she slipped up, she told me that she plays like Aubrey, whereas Q actually said that his favorite player is Jeremy Collins, who has won, um, and has played like three times, and won on a returning player season, and came back and did fairly well on Winners of War. Like, he, <laughs> I love Aubrey. Case in point, my daughter's name is Aubrey. But Jeremy is, like, on paper, the better Survivor player based on the fact that he's won. Not based on the fact of his gameplay, because I like Aubrey better. But to say that, like, I understand any name but me, and in that moment he's just like, this is something I can go on. She also had no reason to trust him from the beginning. Like, him him at Tribal be saying that, well, you should have told me when we were talking. that Like, you lied to me in the first place. And all I could think of was, if she didn't, if she didn't lie, if she said, like, look, I was on the bottom, I voted for Ben, this is how it went down, then he would have gone back to his group and said, well, she's a flip-flopper, she didn't actually stick with her tribe, she tried to do something else. We shouldn't work with her like there was it was a no win scenario for Mo in that situation. Um, I think that she did like everything that she could have done by way of putting it out there at tribal and saying like, I'm on the bottom of this tribe. I'm willing to work with whoever. It didn't really make sense to do it on the beach because at that point there's still different names going around. But when it's fairly clear that it's you and then she played her shot in the dark, which continues to not work. But 
it's there. She played it. It's worked exactly to its odds, I think, because we've seen two successful. Uh, uh yeah. In out of like I don't know, probably like twenty ish, fifteen ish times it's been played with. Like I feel like it's actually coming not, out to one yeah. out of six like odds uh, across the times it's been using. I disagree slightly. I think Mo. I think there's a path. Uh, it w- it would have been somewhat difficult, and maybe it doesn't portend a longer, you know, getting through more than just this week or whatnot. But I think if she, you know, her whole tribe says, let's let's lie and say that we were all united, and she says, okay, great, and then picks one person, maybe Q wouldn't have been. Yeah, the, the I think person. that's my thing. Um, is but not pick Q. one person to relent to of like, hey, just so you know. This is the real situation. My tribe thinks I'm going to, they wanted me to be all kumbaya and stick with them. Obviously, I, you know, if I do that, great, but like, I'm not, it's not going to work out long term for me. So I'm a free agent. Do do the two of you tribes want to get together, Nami and Vanu, and I can tell you who the strongest, the biggest threat is on Siga, and we can blindside them and get them out. But we've got to, like, no one can know that I told you this. And, you know, that would, Again, if that all works and she, you know, they take out Charlie or Maria or whoever she decides is, you know, the biggest player on Sega, does that, you know, the rest of the tribe be like, okay, that's cool. But we also, you were the first person that merged to like go against your tribe and make a big move that doesn't, you know, spell great things for you. It's going to make it really hard for you to continue another two to three weeks. Sure. But I think uh, it could have got out of this situation and mostly just if you are going to it was just felt a little, you know, too late to at the tribal to play the card of like, I'm on the bottom and I'm willing to work with you guys. Like it, that's not gonna, I feel like you got to do that before tribal council. If, if that's the only move you've got, which was the only move she's got, she was in a shitty position. It was not like yeah. I'm guaranteeing something else would have worked. Um, I just think there was at least a little bit better probability trying some other things or telling someone early, but yeah, Q, I don't know that Q and we'll talk a lot about Q for episode seven, uh, is, is the one I would have told that to, I maybe would have picked, uh, Tevin. Tevin or Hunter, um, that seemed like they were capable of being a little more quiet from yeah. Nami or maybe even Tiff who seems, you know, capable of being quiet about things and keeping it to herself. Um, but, so uh, yeah. I'm going to bounce off of that. I think I agree with you. I think that Tevin is the ideal person because Tevin is on the side that won. Tevin is also the person who threw out Venus. Tevin is also the one that we see saying like, uh, granted in like episode seven, which is literally the next day that he wants to make a big move. And this is his opportunity. I think that if Mo would have gone to Tevin and said, look, word on the beach is your you gave up like you offered up venus as an option i'm willing to work with you guys to make that happen and this is the situation this is how it went down on our beach i think that tevin is more likely to accept facts for facts rather than facts for ulterior motives and like obviously the ulterior motive is staying but it also gives them that extra number to then go after venus and granted, they lose a Nami number, but they keep their tribe stronger based on tribal division. Speaking of Venus, uh, the only other thing to point out here during this scramble and tribal is she, you know, here's her name. She's aware that Nami has offered her as the sacrificial person. And her response isn't just like, it shouldn't be me, is I think an interesting one of like, uh, ladies. It should be a guy. There's more of us than there is of them. I, she isn't aware yet, but there is at least one guy on the beach who has floated the, like, we need to be scared of the women getting together. So yep. maybe the women actually should get together in this instance and not allow it to all just be, oh, we threw out two names. They both happen to be women on the tribes, of course. And she throws out Charlie being the ideal person in this scenario to take out which I think one is a good read on like, you know, she's going to pick one of the guys from Sega. She could pick between three of them. I think she has a pretty astute immediate read of like, Charlie's the biggest threat of those three. He's also the only votable person. 
Yeah. Well, oh, that's why yeah, I forgot that part. I'm, <laughs> that is all that is another factor why he is the ideal person to go after. Okay, then this point's completely wrong. I get the two episodes mixed up who's <laughs> oh, me too. who's not. But uh well so but this she's is what not I hate, as astute though. about it, but she, she doesn't realize that it would have been the astute pick anyways of like I think, Charlie is the is the guy to go for. Yeah, and I think she got that. Like I think that she had an accurate read before like before he was the only option, I think that she absolutely knew that like he was the better positioned person because it's clear that Tim and Ben are close, but it's clear that Charlie is fairly good with everyone on his tribe. So if you look at someone like Tim, where he really only communicates mostly with Ben, that kind of tells you that he's not as much of a threat. Um, and but this like this whole division as lopsided as it is this is what bothers me about the tribe swap fake merge is all of the players who would normally be targets at a merge scenario and would have the opportunity for like pretty big blindsides like if you're able to get out a Q or a hunter or someone like that but then all of those people are safe the people that you would normally go after. And I get that some people would then counter and say, well, that makes it more interesting because you can't go after the people you normally do. But there's a reason for that. Like you need them to get your tribe to the merge, but then you don't need them. You need to get rid of them before individual immunity. And I, yeah, I just, I don't like the setup and if they're going to do it and if it's going to keep happening, then do what we used to do, do schoolyard pick. Because then at least it gives the opportunity to have a more even tribe dynamic when you're going into a challenge like that. And you still have the one person who is not picked, which then almost lights even more of a fire of just like, okay, you guys did not pick me for this, which means that you don't think that I'm capable of this. I'm going after the person that I feel the most disrespected by and joining the other team. Yeah. Whoever the losing captain is, you better know yeah. that I'm trying to get you voted out tonight. Yeah, no matter exactly. What, you guys didn't pick me. Yeah, uh, you're preaching to the choir as far as <laughs> drafts. The more drafts, the better in these shows. Random teams are pointless. It's not fun. It doesn't take that long. It doesn't eat up that much time to do the draft. And it's just, yeah, it adds so many more fun dynamics. But overall, I think both of us are just on the same. Like, just let them play the play. three tribes and then immediately merge and have all everyone voting together i'm down i'm totally fine with like the first you know if there's 13 people 12 people two people win immunity at the individual challenge i'm even down for the like it's not that hard at the 13 to be like not maybe not split them into two sides and only half of you get the reward but like hey the two winners you each get to pick two people to bring with you to the food and now half of you get to eat and half of you don't or whatever um, but I just want them to be, yeah, to be playing a coherent game that they know. I want them to know yep. the game they're playing for the next few days and not be on the, I'm not interested in the, they're always on their toes because they don't know what the no. situation is tomorrow. I want them to know the situation is these are the people left and a couple of us will always be safe at any given turn. But otherwise, like these are my opponents. These are who I can build alliances with and not get, you know, no one gets horribly screwed over the how the tribes are in either of these two episodes really. Um, But we've seen it happen before and you're setting yourself up for it to happen over and over of like someone who just gets a legitimately horrible draw that suddenly they otherwise their probability of going home would have been 10%. And now it's suddenly 85%. Yeah. Mo Mo would not have been the focus. No. And really Venus wouldn't have been either. They would have been the people Uh, that you want to work with because they are people who will swap like who will go against their tribe in those situations but to me like the biggest thing is you've got like you've got 13 people they're all on a beach and i think jeff's mentioned it each episode tribal lines are still so strong right now and it's because they keep mixing them up and not letting everybody vote together so there is absolutely no reason whatsoever to start making relationships with people from other tribes at that point. Because really, this has happened over two days. Like, 48 hours, 
I can stick with my tribe for 48 hours to ensure that I get through the 48 hours, and then I'll start playing the game if this is the game that you want to give me. But he had said, like, when do tribal lines disappear? And I yelled at the TV and said, when you actually do a proper merge and let everybody play with everybody else, because they haven't had that opportunity. And I think that's why you're going to see tribal divisions continue season after season until we get rid of like this portion of the game. Yeah. And it, then it just elongates it into like, it's basically not going to go away until three or four of them are left at six yep. or seven and can, you know, feel like now it's now or never to get rid of them. Well, any final words on this episode or Mo, or were you just eventually, you know, by the time now that we've watched episode seven, you're like, it's fine. I could just switch my favorite from Mo to Liz and we're all good. Um, I did actually, like, I'm now rooting for Liz, because Liz is hilarious, if nothing else, on Twitter. Um, I'm still very sad for Mo, and I've lost, like, the past couple episodes, I've lost some <laughs> some people that I really like, and that's just the nature of this style of game. Like, I know that these people, conceivably, if it was in, like, a full-on normal season of Survivor, wouldn't have been the targets at this point, but based on this game... The thing that I've actually taken away from it is 18 people play, 17 people lose. Like, it doesn't, you can still be a great player and lose Survivor because yeah. only one person wins Survivor. So, and sometimes they're not even always a definitively great player. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it, I'm, I'm fully expecting people like Mo and, um, spoiler alert soda from next episode to come back. Like there are people looking at this cast. I absolutely anticipate seeing them back. So it's not as crushing a blow when they go out the first time. Now, if they come back again and they go out, then it's going to hurt a little bit more. Cause I'm like, uh, I don't know how many people are coming back third time in the new era, but I definitely think we're going to hit a returning player season. And I definitely think people like Mo are going to show back up again. I think you got three seasons uh, to wait for that to Me happen. Too. Um, but I I do anticipate and have started really hoping for the my my big dream is season we will watch seven, eight, and nine of the same format, everything the same, all good. And then season fifty is return new era returnee players only. Yeah. And but playing a thirty nine day season yes. um, would be amazing um but yeah so that's episode six and let's then move on and walk through episode number seven we'll be a little more regular in depth with this one um so let's start right at the very top the first big question of the episode is you know venus of course is immediately wanting to know who voted for her does not believe it was mariah who left um mostly believes it was soda whether even though soda says it was not and uh is is pretty clearly not lying and charlie gives in uh, without being confronted or asked or anything just hears venus <laughs> here's venus sternly talking to soda over and over uh yep. and accusing her and decides i'm gonna tell her so charlie tells venus he was the one that voted for her eventually people within sega are upset that he has done this and nami on it actually because i think it's tevin is the first one in confessional that's like what the hell was charlie doing um and, and then actually sega might have been the ones least upset with him honestly because it's q and tevin that are both q is the one that literally has to go give him the like Q, who's now everyone's coach. I think Banu calling Q his coach just went to Q's head a yep. little too much because Q pulls Charlie down on the beach immediately and is like, what the hell are you doing? Don't do that. Yep. Um, but we could talk about Q and Tevin both later. We will talk about them both plenty. Charlie, good or bad that he told, that immediately tells Venus in that moment without any any instigation of him himself. Better for his game. To just be upfront so? about it. Um, okay. I mean, I don't anticipate Q being here for the long haul, so I don't think it matters that Q threw a hissy fit on the beach. Um, I agree that it's better for people who are trying to divide Soda and Venus for that to just fester. 
but it doesn't really serve Charlie any benefit for them to just bicker and everything like that. And if nothing else, he might gain a point or two somewhere from being the guy who's just like, hey, you guys can put this to bed. It was on me. I'll explain it when you want me to explain it. But I did it. She didn't. Which I love that Venus immediately is like, no, don't talk to me right now. Maybe later, whatever. Like, you clearly wanted to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you mean. You're the last person that gets to say, we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> like, imagine the roles reverse Venus. I think you would very much be like, no, we are going to talk about it right now. Um, yeah, I mean, it might be playing the results uh, here, but... And I don't know if I maybe felt this way in the moment, but by the end of the episode, we see it does work in the fact that like it, there is a chance that you could smooth this over with Venus in this scenario. When you yeah. vote for someone, sometimes it's like, this is a, you know, there's no going back from this where these two people aren't going to work together. This one being as early as it was and kind of innocent quote unquote, as it was, uh, we see by the end of the episode, like they're, more than fine willing to be like that yeah it doesn't matter like we should clearly be working together to some form and i think charlie maybe is aware that uh you know this isn't a person who i'm just like i didn't vote for you because i'm desperate to get you out of the game i'm just like think you have we cannot ever work together we you know you're the biggest threat out here it was just the name i was told and kind of, and went with and i was a little bit out of the loop so well maybe it's he said results it. but yeah he said it, it was, on twitter i think too uh, where he said, like, he knew that Mo was playing the shot in the dark because Mo told him that she was going to play the shot in the dark. So if Mo's playing the shot in the dark, that means that Mo doesn't have a vote in there. But that also means that if she's safe, then all of the votes that are coming at Mo then have to go somewhere else. And if Venus is trying to put a vote on Charlie, it makes sense for him to try to put a vote on Venus because it's going to be a lot easier if there's a tie, like say that there's one vote for each of them. It's going to be a lot easier to say like Venus is the one that you've all been trying to get out. This is your opportunity to do it. Mostly no blood on your hands. Yeah. It's a nice safeguard. So yeah. it was a smart vote and I think it was smart to immediately tell her, even if it did get some people upset at him. Um, <laughs> like we'll Q said, it wasn't those. part of the plan. I mean, like you weren't even voting with Charlie. Like, yeah, what, when did you guys plan strategies yeah. together, buddy? Um, but, you know, Q's plan is the beach's plan. Uh, yep. And that's that's how that's going <clears> to <throat> be. We then have the, as they reference throughout the episode, the human moment of Ben wakes up in the middle of the night to uh, in a full-blown panic attack. Um, and Kenzie, thankfully, wakes up as well and witnesses it and is able to uh, not only just be a friend that is there, but also has, we get some little backstory that she, you know, has some experience with, in her family of working uh, with family members and loved ones uh, who experience similar things. So she's the ideal person for Ben yeah. to have uh, wake up on the Fiji. Cause as someone who's had a panic attack or two, I can't mm -hmm. imagine having one in this scenario, how, no. <laughs> how hard it is to get it. They're, they're, any of any anything that is qualifies as a panic attack is hard to get out of in the moment regardless um but the uncomfortableness the having not eaten or anything where your head's at and then being like oh yeah and there's cameras on me and i'm on a game show and like and everything else like it would just it would be really difficult so pretty amazing for him that kenzie is there and they yep. you know are able to connect over this both for him to get through that very difficult moment but then also you know, it, it's one, it, you know, you have to talk about the, the human part and the game part of all of these, no matter how just regular human of a moment it is. It's also probably beneficial for both of their games of like, yeah. suddenly they're like, Hey, wow. Uh, that was really nice last night that you did that. And also like, are, should we be friends and should we also be like aligned together? And like, is this, could this actually help both of our games? So what did you think about this entire scene and uh, and what it maybe maybe means for the two of them potentially working together or just having much more of a bond moving forward. I think it it could have saved Ben this week um, because of that bond, even on a subconscious level. There could have been some tug at the heartstrings of we just had this very real moment that transcends the game. I don't want 
to then just turn around and send him home when conceivably like you'll have another opportunity based on numbers and everything else. And the fact that like, it's been mostly Sega players leaving. Um, they completely didn't mention the fact that Liz was there too. And like Liz, Liz was, was right she there. Yeah. She woke up like she was laying beside Ben. So she woke up first. And I think she, like when he said, can somebody hold my hand? She was the first one to hold his hand, and then, like, Kenzie was on the other side of the camp and came over. Um, but, they, yeah, they were both there. Now, like, I think Liz would have gone back to sleep when, obviously, it was clear that somebody with more experience, potentially, um, was there. But, yeah, I think I think that it was an interesting moment. It was very human. Um, I'll be interested to see what, the, like, the ripples of that are um, later on down the line. It could very much be a blip on the radar as far as this was a human moment, but you are my competition. And I think that Kenzie has that like on off switch. And I don't know that Ben does to the same extent, which actually makes me love him even more um, where he's just like, this person looked out for me. I'm going to look out for them for the rest of this game. Um, yeah. I think, I think that it could, it could certainly have long lasting impacts, but it did also just all happen in like a 24 hour period. And that's the thing that I keep going back to that. They always say the game's accelerated, right? Like the new era accelerated gameplay, everything like that. I never really fully put that into perspective until I was looking at um, the days as they were ticking by on the bottom, because we watch with friends um, over FaceTime. So we always like fast forward through commercials, wait, and then kind of give each other a, it's this beach, the more like this day in the bottom. So that was when I realized that, like, the fake merge and everybody voted out Mariah, that was one day from challenge to tribal. And then the next morning is this situation where it's, like, that and then the challenge and then the two tribes getting split up. And that whole vote is, like, a 24-hour period. And that's a way more accelerated game than a 39-day game. And I just never fully factored that in. So I totally understand um, the panic attack with, like like you said, like the negative energy that was going around and the tension and everything else, especially in this 48-hour period. Yeah, and then I do think you are right. It probably, I don't know that it saves Ben this episode, but it definitely, I think Kenzie is not going to vote for Ben that night. Uh, you know, after yeah. it, uh, it at least builds that but then i also think you're spot on that from i feel like we've seen enough from kenzie to feel com to feel confident that she is the type of person that is needed to be a great player or a potential winner of the sea of like i can do that and then i could just completely flip into game and it yeah. none of that matters and i'll do what is absolutely best and that i do so far from ben lean more of like you might not have it fully in you if the time comes where like you had to like vote for your best friend on the beach or yeah. or whatever that you would have a more difficult time pulling off a lie or uh you know a, a tough vote or et cetera et cetera that you could do it but maybe you would be a little more obvious uh give it away a little more easier because you're just too <laughs> you you can't quite split too pure things up quite as well um well, we head to the Muni Challenge, and as we referenced, they are, of course, split into two teams. <gasps> and this time, they are split up into two teams that will eventually go to two different beaches and vote separately. And two people will be immune. Two people will go home. And the the game itself, first off, is obviously one we have seen yep. many times before, but we hadn't seen in, I think, uh, maybe three-ish seasons Give in the take, last yeah. time as we get the flashback to the last time we saw it was during a borderline storm. And so just crazy <laughs> waves. It lasted like a minute in total or whatever. And everyone just falls off right away. And this time they're on a, such a serene ocean that we literally, I don't know if they skipped the bottom. They did. Rungs. They definitely they did. Just, they just skipped it. Right. I, I think we just didn't, didn't see didn't it. Show us. I, th well, I think they just cut it. I think they didn't make them do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, the only podcast I listened to was Tyson's, as usual, and I he referenced that they're they're like willing to not just not show us, but like skip 
a right. part of a challenge if they're like fairly confident no one's going to get out on this and like what's you know they've moved a little more towards like they don't necessarily want to be at the challenge for five hours or whatever um from a, just a production operation standpoint especially and 26 so, days yeah so i think they might have potentially like straight up not even done the bottom yeah. rung but either way we don't see that they we see them start on the top rung and then all make it through that and move to the one-legged portion but before that happens we get some very funny <laughs> some very fun and funny moments of you know q starts it up with like we should we should do something out here we should play the alphabet game what i forget who the first person that doesn't understand Hunter. how he wants to ben play. yeah ben doesn't understand what Q's rules for the alphabet game are. And then Charlie understands them, but jokingly purposely doesn't follow them to make Q mad. And then Tim starts giving a shout out, which I was blown away by Tim clearly has asked everyone about their families and remembers everyone's family members names. He to me lost impressive. He lost the game right there. It's like everyone, yeah, Tim's best friends with everyone. How the, I don't know anyone's brother, sister, yeah. mother, whatever his name. Like, you know all of these people? Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, like when he started rattling off family members and names and where they live, I was like, Tim's not lasting like more than two episodes. Because it's an offhand comment, and he probably didn't think about it in the moment. But that tells absolutely every person that he has had one-on-one -on -one conversations to the point where they're talking family with almost everyone there and then not only that but he's retaining that information like you cannot keep that person in the game mm -hmm. i hadn't even realized that yeah that's a huge red flag he yeah. definitely should not have done that uh i had not i had not thought of that before wow <laughs> yeah bad move for tim and obviously uh not to play the results again but yeah it, he he does go out well, by they, the end of this episode they used to do and they haven't in years but they used to do um like a trivia game um, towards the back half of the season where it's like how well do you know your tribe mates and it's these questions about like family or like tattoos interests whatever um and i like when when he started rattling that off i was like man if they do any like if they bring something like that back and he's still around like he would beast that mm -hmm. well they have they have their good fun eventually People do fall. Uh, it takes a while, though. It's only Q and Soda fall first and are out for a little bit before then they are Q, Soda, and Ben end yeah. up out. And then there's like another long break between before they do the transition from standing on top to one foot. And then that lasts not very long as anticipated. Um, and everyone pretty much falls right away. Tiff and Kenzie are right at the very end basically fall at the same time kenzie gets like an extra second out so she wins immunity for her group but they are the quote-unquote losers yep. uh of you know as far as having to go to the shitty beach and the purple and tribal team, first tevin and maria yeah and tribal first and non-jury in the purple team tevin and maria get down to the very very end and have a nice battle tevin a That's couple safe. incredible recoveries yeah. where i was just like you're, Maria's got to be so pissed if she loses this. Like, there's no way. Uh, but then he does drop, and my girl Maria does win. And uh, any any thoughts as far as this was our first, not it, the only it was our first true individual immunity challenge, and it was a balance endurance one, which are the you know the bread and butter of this phase of the game. So any any performances stand out for you as far as maybe different than your expectations or re recalibrating what you think of a, uh, of a player's chances moving forward. Hunter wasn't as good as I anticipated him being. Um, Q 100% fell and did not throw it. And the, the only other thing is that, and I talked about this with some of the people in the brain candy discord. One of the cool things about the diversity initiative with CBS is that you get those conversations like that, where Jeff completely misreads the question and then they have that conversation and you could tell that Jeff was legitimately learning something in that moment. And if it was just our standard pre diversity initiative cast, I'm going to bet money that you're probably not going to have that conversation. Um, and that sort of like that back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 
that was fun and it was it was funny that like q was the one a sitting out then so yeah. from like behind jeff could like chime in and be like no, no that's real that's real thing he's not just like messing with you jeff like that that's he wants to know how much time is left um or how much time has passed or whatever so yeah that was a funny moment um i the only the stand i wanted to meet one it i was uh confirmed what i and why i picked maria as my winner pick is because i was like i she seems she's has the physical build that tells me if I had to guess, I think she's going to be good at the balance endurance thing. Um, and so one for one there. I didn't know Tevin, if he would be good at that. I'm always weary of the tall people. Yeah. Um, uh, Cause as I'm not tall, but I'm six one, I'm on the verge of being tall. Uh, but I balance is, uh, I feel more difficult, the taller you are. And so I'm always a little weary of that. So I was impressed by him, maybe a little better than anticipated and no one else yeah no one like stood out i guess other than maybe q of like yeah uh whether you were trying or not uh i agree with tony i think you were i do not think you threw that on purpose um and uh so maybe him falling as quickly as he did is the only kind of stand out in that direction and yanu being together yet again yes and so that yeah very lucky for them because we had two of these scrambles and the I'm gonna refer to them as the losers and the winners, although sure. you know, again, neither neither is necessarily uh won or lost. Um, but the losers being the the purple group, the group that has Vanu, the one that goes to tribal first. Their scramble, we already referenced Q claims he purposely lost at the challenge because he wanted to test how good his alliances were, so he needed to be vulnerable, which is just like, no. It's you, the best way you to test your alliance. You don't need to be up for the vote to find out what where people want to vote. You you could do it a different way. You could be safe. But um, what do we think overall about Q? We've made some snickering comments so far here. Uh, he definitely feels like he is in charge of everything out there. Um, I felt differently about the episode and then the clip that we got. And for those who have not seen it, go on X, uh, formerly known as Twitter. And they put out, you know, they put out the couple like bonus scenes. And there was one of Q that is just a 90 second long confessional where he goes through every single other player and gives his like opinion of them. A lot of them, which are accurate, some of them are not as much, but it's like fascinating that he is willing to sit down and be like, let me tell you exactly how good or how far are my thoughts on every one of the players. And I actually thought that one was, it was like more kind of level-headed and like yeah. enjoyable than everything we see in the episode that I feel like is a little too strong and a little bit too much. Like you're not going to last very long if you clearly put out the energy of I'm in charge and whatever I say goes. And also I'm going to say something different every time we have a conversation because we see Tiff get very upset throughout yep. this episode of like, dude, we talked three minutes ago and you were like all about this person. And I said, fine. And then we came back three minutes later <laughs> and the person I previously had floated, you're now all in on them. And you're like, screw the plan I came up with two minutes ago. So what do, what do we think of Q's overall game right now throughout this episode? He's a mess, man. Like, the whole, I threw it on purpose because I needed to test my alliance. Like, the one way you don't want to test your alliance is by going home because you made a bad alliance and then, quote unquote, threw the challenge to ensure that you were vulnerable to really test it. Especially because he also went back on the alliance that he himself created. Um, yeah, I'm, I was never super high on Q's supply. Um, just, I got that vibe from him and it's the vibe checks <laughs> as we go on. Um, plus, I mean, he got out Mo or like helped orchestrate it. So I'm a little bit salty about yeah, that. He's in Tony's but, dog house now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But just like he's doing weight, he's telling everybody else that they're doing too much while doing like at least five times as much as they are. Um, and it's it's definitely a do as I say, not as I do. Um, and I'm sure he's a great dude. Like, I'm sure that outside of this game, um, he's great. I've seen him in, like, a lot of the photos of a lot of the watch parties. And he did, um, like, a celebrity, uh, like, a reality star celebrity basketball thing um, with Maria, I think, actually. She was also there. So 
clearly he's a good dude. It's just like one he's very he dominated. Um, yeah, that one I think. My guy Fassie <laughs> shows up at all those and just whoops everyone's ass. I love it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, everyone else. <laughs> but yeah, I think I don't think he's long for the game because even even the other two Yanu members are also like getting tired of it and they're his tight alliance and it seems like the plus one alliance from the the journey the plus ones are the ones that are actually holding the alliance together the actual core alliance are the ones that are sniping at each other well so that's the only i mostly agree with your assessment and definitely he is uh you can't you can maybe get away with like I'm calling the shots for a while like that's fine but you can't be the guy wanting to call the shots as strongly as he is and do the flip-flopping part that he keeps doing to Tiff and Kenzie that's going to be like well like hey dude if we're going to let you kind of make the decisions here can you make one and stick with it because it's pretty tough to follow you if you're you know turning left and right every every time we look up but I do think he does eventually, obviously they vote out Tim and, yep. you know, so he is going against his, uh, that Alliance, but I, he only does that in response to, I think the one, the accurate read he makes and that they all kind of make throughout the scramble is we've got, should we stick with that Alliance, that six person Alliance that we had created at the journey or is this going to be stay party lines and Tim throughout the scramble is the one who for the second episode in a row is kind of like put in the position of like, which side are you going to kind of put first on your pecking order? And he very clearly is like, I'm more pro Sega and wanting Sega's numbers to equal Nami's here or be higher than them at some point than I am pro journey plus one Alliance. And they all realize that. And so I I look at their that alliance of like that could still very well work for a while because Hunter and Tevin are like for sure. They're like, we're yeah, that sounds great. We're good with that. And Maria, who we didn't talk about in the last episode, was the one who, you know, they get to the beach and Q finds out, you don't even know about this. <laughs> Tim didn't even talk to you. He said you were his number one. Uh, but she kind of smartly sees is like that's actually like a good group and a good idea so she's like pretty on board and i feel like after this episode if q wouldn't be maybe rubbing some of them the wrong way a little bit or too forceful it would be an easy swap to be like hey tim was not all in on this idea so we got him out and maria like you move charlie in and we still have six you were yeah. it always it almost it should have maybe been Maria and Charlie if the goal was really to just look for the strongest twosome of each of these tribes and totally. like let's let us six get to the end and then figure it out. Then it would be like an easy move to make. But I think Q, while making a solid move within this moment and reading Tim correctly in this moment, isn't setting himself up to then do the follow through that could work and really take him far. I think he's setting it up to be like it's not going to be me this time. But uh, I'm I'm not setting up to get a lot further than no. this moment. No, I will counter that because in the sense that yes, Tim wanted to go against Hunter first, but Tim also had a correct read of this is our opportunity to get rid of Hunter. He has no one else from his tribe. The only people that he has that are even considering voting with him are this journey alliance that we made, and. Ben is not as big of a threat as Hunter to win immunity. And, but I liked that that conversation with Q then got reframed by way of our unreliable narrator in Q to being like, well, he's Sega strong. He doesn't want to get rid of a Sega member. Like, no, he wants to get rid of the immunity threat while the immunity threat has no one else. And he doesn't know that he has an idol. So he thinks that Hunter is completely on an island by himself, and this is the perfect opportunity to just, like, pick him off. And then Q's like, well, he's not with the Alliance, so we have to get him out of the Alliance. This is my <laughs> this is my counter-argument. He wanted to vote somebody out from the Alliance, so I will defend our Alliance by voting somebody out from the Alliance. Yeah, which, I mean, it gets messy. Yeah, <laughs> Tim, I think Tim could have handled the conversations a hundred percent to 
make because like that is a quality argument of like we should get hunter out here maybe um but just handled it in a way that i did kind of say it's not just about getting hunter out it is also like it's the best you know best case scenario for me yeah. is you know that we both of my alliances stay as strong as possible um Let's just stick with this tribe and finish them out before we sure. talk about the other one. Then obviously Tim goes home. Hunter does not play his idol, which is a big, a big moment. My one question though was, I mean, I think you always want to, I think the position Hunter ends up in is, is better than what I'm about to put forward um, because he still has an idol and has kind of lowered his threat level to a little bit while having made a quality move uh, as far as like he could, pitch to a jury uh in the end of like i got through this situation by like in the moment making new ties and like finding a way out of a really tough situation but i the whole time was thinking no one on no one at, at least in this group knows he has an idol no. it is still a question for me if someone on nami knows because it was a pretty tough scramble for him to get it and i yeah. i think there's a world where we find out next episode or whatever like Hey, actually, Liz or Tevin or someone is on to this, but he is with Nonami, so there's no one that could be. And I at least had in my head the idea of, like, should he maybe not try that hard to sway? I don't know how you, like, get them to vote for you. Uh, yeah. But if in his head he's like, it would be cool if they voted for me and I play my idol and it's just who I vote for, then yeah. goes home. And, like, I have the chance here if I think – there's a way of a world where it's a unanimous hunter vote. And so it's just my vote, take someone out and it's a true hundred percent, no chance anyone thinks or knows I have an idol that like that could be cool, but then that's a big move early on. Yeah. And again, it's kind of hard to like manufacture. How am I confident? This is a unanimous, they're all going to vote for me, but I still have to like have conversations with them and not, you know, I can't be like, yeah, it's fine. I'm going home. I get it. You guys yeah. are going to vote for me or whatever. So I don't know exactly how you pull that off, but it was in my head that like, it's rare that you get a chance, a time where truly you could be a hundred percent certain no one has any idea or is even thinking of the fact that you have an idol and that you could play it and be, you know, get the full, the full effect, you know, the best possible idol effect, which is completely save myself from a unanimous vote. And I get to now handpick the person to go home. Now, um, flip so side, though, is it better to do that, or is the best way to use an idol in the new era to take it out at final tribal council and say, I had this since day whatever, and I was able to navigate the game knowing it was in my pocket but never having to play it, and no one knew I had it? Because that's what Marianne did, and that ended up being like a holy shit, Marianne's a sleeper agent. Um, so I don't know... I don't know what the best move is with an idol anymore. Um, and that's one of the benefits of the new era is that because the game is constantly shifting, what they do with advantages is also constantly shifting. So something like an idol, you don't know anymore if the best thing that you can do with it and the biggest move is to cancel out the most votes and to orchestrate who you want out to be gone or if you're able to keep it and not need it and get to the end and then be like on top of outplaying every single one of you, I had a safety net that I never even needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That it's just so tough to like, yeah. that's why it's so impressive that Marianne did that um, because it's so tough to never use it. Uh, and I forget when do we, do we know the beware idols that Tiff and Hunter both have? No one on Sega has, right? Because Jem had it and she left. Jem went it. home with it. Yeah. Um, so Tiff and Hunter, do we remember what what vote their idols are good until? I think it's six. I think it's six. Yeah, I think that's right too. Um, so a while, so he can he can hold on to that while. So yeah, yeah, uh, that'd be great. Um, I think that strategy is more because I don't remember was Mary Ann's good until a specific time, and then she maybe didn't have to say at final tribal like when she could have used it by or whatever because in my mind it'd be easier to pull that off it's like hey no one knows but this expired at 10 people <laughs> and i didn't need to use it by then and so then i just kept it and i don't have to say that it expired at 10 and 
you know, it was, I was the only one. It wasn't a beware. It was from a journey or something. So yeah. it's like, no one knows Jeff's not going to call me out or whatever in the moment. Um, so that'd be like an easier path to doing that. But yeah. All right. Well, Tim goes home. Um, and unfortunately for him does not get to make the jury does not get to hand out, hang out at Ponderosa. The winners quote unquote winners, uh, half that still have to vote someone out here. Their scramble is also starts with the obvious like well there's one person on the bottom here because you know sega has the least people here um and one of you is safe maria so charlie is on the bottom and charlie's very much feeling like ah shit like what's gonna go on um but much to charlie's chagrin early everyone's like we should eat our food and then take a nap on the beach uh which was one of the first times that i thought of like how hard it would be not to take a nap yeah. after like you find that you get your first food in 13 days for one or two of them and then it's warm out you just ate like a thousand calories after having zero for 13 days i'm falling asleep and i've never really thought of like how hard that would be to not be like i would really love to lay down right now i haven't yeah. slept at all and right now i could fall asleep for sure <laughs> um so he's panicked but then quickly realizes once he finally gets people to start talking realizes hey no one's tried to vote for charlie everyone <laughs> sees the opportunity to vote for <laughs> to do a blind side of anyone else except for me so great i'll just kind of sit back and watch so i felt like charlie got super lucky but then you know had the right read of like yep. he didn't go into oh I, he went into I will just stand back and do whatever you tell me mode versus like, oh, this is great. I want to be a part of it. Like, let me also kind of have some authority within this. Like, I think he just did everything exactly right um, and had to just be having the best time being like, holy shit, I can't believe this is my life. Because one hour ago, I thought this was my final day on the beach. He and Liz were the only two whose names did not come up. And Liz has sort of positioned herself in this really weird spot where people just come to her and explain their move. Like Tevin just went down the beach and was like, we're going to tell everybody that it's Venus, but in reality it's soda. And then like just completely broke it down for her. And like Liz had to do no scrambling whatsoever. And I think that I, I think that people are forgetting that Liz is also a good talker because they're willing to discount the fact that like, yes, she's won a lot of money. Like she, she has earned a lot of money and she has several companies and everything like that. And I almost think that that could have been a smoke screen of sorts where she did that up front and then she just sort of laid low and she doesn't have a target on her at all. I think she's one of the few people that has not been mentioned as a potential target in the run of this, like everybody on the same beach. Well, so part of the difficulty with it is that we spent so little time with Nami because yeah. they literally never went to tribal council. And so, you know, that's half half of every episode is just the, the group going to tribal council. So we spent very little time with them and she became the, you know, last on the total pool of like storylines that were yeah. being g- generated from her tribe. So we have definitely seen her at least there. We could have missed a ton of, you know, her clearly Tevin felt comfortable with her, whether it's just purely because, Hey, there's the three of us kind of jockeying for who gets blindsided here. And you're the fourth, or it's because like, I, that's happening, but I also have a good relationship with you. And the cameras haven't shown the viewers that yet. The thing I will say about Liz one, uh, I, I, I don't know if it was before we started recording or once we started recording, but yeah, Liz is absolutely amazing and hilarious and you should go check out her recent Twitter feed from this episode because it's just the best. But those businesses, the thing worth referencing is uh, digital marketing is her like main thing. And so she knows not just how to like talk, but like, you know, you can use a different word for marketing. Uh, manipulation can come up sometimes yes, um, with that, which is fine to say. And but it is she's she's adept and very successful at selling ideas and products and things and people and everything else. So, yes, uh, she is has a threat. She clearly is sitting in a pretty good spot based off of what happens throughout this episode. And 
she's watching the other three people from her tribe, Tevin, Soda, and Venus, all secretly be like, one of the three of us has to go. Venus is the one being upfront about this. <laughs> yep. um, everyone knows Venus wants <laughs> Soda or eventually even maybe Tevin or just someone interesting. Basically, Venus just wants something that isn't the easy move to happen, yep. which I respect. Uh, she's being a little too on front street about it potentially. Um, but I respect the hell out of we, this is the second episode in a row. She's like, why are we doing the easy thing? Why yeah. can't we do the hard thing that actually benefits all of us the most? So I respect the hell out of that. I also respect the hell out of Maria using the position she is in in this episode of she's safe. And as she kind of says at the tribal, like no one, usually the person safe is like one of the biggest votes. And, you know, everyone's talking to you. And this time, no one gave a shit. <laughs> Everyone was just like, we'll tell Maria at the end. Um, and so she just feels like truly comfortable to tell Venus straight to her face after their like second or third conversation of like, hey, I'm going to level with you. This is why it's not working for you. This is I'm not the only I know that I and many others have felt the exact same way. And I'll explain that last conversation we had. I felt like you were telling me what to do and you didn't give a shit what I was going to say in return. And I think that you're doing that with a lot of people. And I'm going to tell you this in a way that's like a little motherly, a little like friendly, like, yeah. hope, you know, the, you're going to probably take this the right way of like, thanks. That was yeah. hard to hear maybe, but like, thank you. And this is, this is going to build our relationship versus tear our relationship apart. Uh, what did you think about Maria? Just like telling Venus straight up, like, Hey, you need to tone it down. You need to like listen to some other people, even if you don't care, like listen yeah. to them at least. Cause right now <laughs> there's a reason why everyone is saying your name is cause like, we think you're cool, but like, it's a little, it's a little too upfront. I think that this is your Caleb and Emily moment. Um, I'm just like, this is why, like, this is what you need to change. If you want to stick around, if you want to go deep in the game, you don't have to, you can keep doing what you're doing, but it's not going to end well. Um, I think that it was exactly what Venus needed to hear. Now, whether she actions it or not, or how she actions it, no idea. But I I like Venus as a player. I think that she plays really hard. Um, I think she may have done better on, like, Yanu. Um, just that dynamic. I think that she may have done better with that crew. I think if she started with them, they may have been, like, a foursome rather than a threesome. And yeah, she would I, not have been able to handle Banu. She would have. No, uh, no, it, she would there not. There would have been some tense. Uh, Banu would not have been treated with the, the kind of kid glove. Uh, like let's, this guy's clearly a great human. So let's be kind to him as kind as we can while we get through the situation. I think she would have been a little more upfront as she has been with every other situation of like, she does this have guy decent reads though. Like she yeah. has some decent reads on people. Like she knows how to play the game. And that's something that's big is sometimes you get people like that who are just, who can be perceived as abrasive, but they don't have the background to really back it up in this setting. Whereas I feel that she really does. Um, she's a very polarizing player for this season. Um, she may even be as close as we're going to get to a quote unquote villain of the season, but she owns it. And she's just like, this is how I want to play because I don't just want to sit on the beach and do nothing and vote the way that everybody thinks that we should vote from here to final tribal. Yeah, I love Venus. Uh, she's the absolute best and she is a shoe in for the returning cast um, yeah. of season 50 or before or after or whatnot. So I hope she says yes to that. And I hope she is. I mean, I, I would. She's one of the people I would, if I had to pick, like, who am I now rooting for to make final three for the entertainment purposes? Uh, she is definitely in that group. All three Nami say each other's names. We go to tribal council and we eventually do get the blind side of Soda, who has no idea it's happening. It's a like legitimate deserving of the word blind side. Yep. She is shocked. And the part that is interesting and that will play out next episode but i want to see what your read of it here is in this moment is tevin votes for venus tevin yeah. is the first one we see on the beat well i mean venus is the first one to say soda's name because it's, it's not this episode that is the first time she says right you know, maybe soda should be out and they they have their you know tenuous relationship throughout um and throughout this episode even of like which i always i really appreciate also both of them 
having all the conversations they did of yeah. being able to be like upfront with each other of like this isn't like going like we aren't you know clicking necessarily but we're going to talk through it even if talking through it is continuing to disagree or accuse each other of stuff or whatever um but we tevin we see tevin put the plan in motion of we should blindside soda but then at the tribal council venus is a little more with as far as what they all say is a little more alluding to doing the blind side of soda yep. and then as the votes go tevin votes for venus and soda then obviously gives venus kind of all the credit for orchestrating this venus accepts the credit i don't yep. think does anything over the top of like oh yeah like give whatever like just like accepts is like you were she says the very <laughs> very petty thing of like you're a great player she says like multiple times and i'm like dude you can't say that to the person you just voted out it's just so it is so amazing television but uh if i'm soda i'm like dude fuck you okay don't don't say that right now um but the question is like what who whose idea was this who went through with it was tevin's vote for venus because he was the one in the group that is doing the like backup vote or was he, did he not believe in the plan? And he, in Soda, decided, okay, we'll just, we'll put our swords down and we'll vote for Venus while Venus actually did rally the, you know, the other three to vote for Soda. I I think there's a big question mark over how this all went down that I, I'm sure we will get answered at the start of the next episode. But what do you feel like is the answer to this question mark right now? Uh, in the immortal words of David and Jessica from Why Blank Lost, Perception is reality. To Soda, Venus was the one who orchestrated that blindside. To Venus, she's the one who orchestrated that blindside. So it doesn't matter that Tevin feels that he orchestrated the blindside. And I don't even know if he did. Like, I th I think that he did. And then I think that he, like you said, tried, like, voted Venus to counter against, like, a shot in the dark or something like that. But that doesn't matter. Like... Venus kind of did it with her whole chest sort of from the beginning and we've got the like the build up to it as well of them not seeing eye to eye of her trying to like put her name out there previously so to then have that follow through I mean whether it was Tevin's plan that ended up coming through they both got the same end result and Venus was the one who looked like she was full on on the plan making sure it happened whereas that one vote for venus while protecting themselves if yeah i i think that i think that venus is going to get the credit for it because i don't know how tevin can spin it to be like you guys all know that that was me right because he because it's hard to because charlie and maria talked to um, talk to Venus. They didn't really talk to Tevin about it. That we saw. From everything that we saw, the edit leads us to believe that Venus was sort of the one that kept pushing that narrative forward, whereas we kind of stopped seeing the Tevin of it all fairly early on on the beach, so I don't know how long he continued that we need to get soda. I think we do see Tevin... I thought we saw Tevin talk to Maria and Charlie first because the first time we get Soda's name coming up more than in like passing occasionally by Venus is Tevin goes to Liz and explains, you know, there's these two different plans. Yeah. Um, one is basically Soda. One is Venus. And Liz is in on either one of them. And then he goes to Maria and Charlie and talks to both of them about, I think, both plans. Um, right. And that's when Venus kind of realizes no one's talking to me as much. And she goes on her kind of pitching spree and talks to Maria and Charlie. Um, and then back to Maria, which is when Maria tells her, like, you need to be a little less assertive about all of this. And so, yeah, in the end, he doesn't vote for her. And yeah. so it's going to be very difficult for Tevin to ever pull off the, like, this was as much me as it was Venus. And they didn't he talk. does have the like if he can get maria charlie or liz or all of them even to say like this plan became real when tevin pitched it right. but then even then they're like 
their response, even if they were like, yeah, this was Tevin's idea and we bought into it because of him, not because of Venus. But then we were shocked when he didn't, he didn't even vote for that. So like, you yeah. know, it, it would be a half win at best. Um, so I think he's, yeah. Cause I was in the moment we, we see, you know, Venus be very happy and so to give her the credit and we see, we get a couple of shots of Tevin looking, you know, kind of perturbed yeah. and in the moment before, you know, who voted for who after, you know, that the show at the end of the episode, I was in my head, like, Oh, he's so salty. Could he like, this was his plan. Yeah, she's same. getting all the credit and he's got to be salty. And so then I was shocked when I stuck around and was like, wait, there was two votes for Venus. So like, I want to know who the other one was. If one, assuming one was soda and seeing it was him and being like, Whoa, okay. Now I'm confused. And I think you just, I thought he might've been the strongest player in the game up until this point. And yeah. I feel like this is going to be like, this could be a fatal blow of like, there's no, I don't know what combo of three people you need to be sitting with and on, who on the jury and who, what a Maria or a Charlie could even say to like spin this in the right way for you to like have credit for this and not to have it look like a moment where you had a plan and yep. you didn't stick with it and everyone else did. And so like that looks, that's like a weak moment for you and that's not going to look good on a final tribal council. No. And I mean, like, here's the thing. Soda is now the mayor of Ponderosa for the jury, which for means sure. that everybody that comes through is going to be like having that conversation with Soda of like what happened because they'll get the the side of whoever came back, but then to actually get Soda's side as well. I know they're not really supposed to talk about the game in any depth, but they obviously do. Um, but the other thing too, like if Tevin's sitting beside anyone else, like any of the people that are currently on that beach with him who voted to get Soda out, none of them are going to say, yeah, it was Tevin's move if Venus is on the jury. And Venus isn't going to say it was Tevin's move if she's in fi final tribal with him. So like, the, I can't picture a scenario where any of those people, even if it was Tevin who initiated the plan, are going to back his play in a way that serves him any purpose because they're not going to give him extra votes potentially if they're against him in final tribal and it's happened so early in the game that by the time that some of these people hit the jury they're not even thinking about that moment anymore yeah i think his best case is he needs all four of them to be on jury all four people that voted for soda to be on the jury none of them next to him including yeah. even liz yeah. um and yeah, by then it he would if that happens, he would have many other things probably two point two and wouldn't even really this wouldn't even be a conversation. But then if it was, he would at least have none of them sitting next to him vying for, you know, the credit or anything where he could say if if it came up, he could at least be like, Hey, yeah, like in soda, I was the first to put your name out there. I didn't go through with it. That was like a moment I had to learn from. But yeah. I think everyone else sitting up there can that voted you out can attest to like I started that and I put that forward and can maybe at least get that little half win. Like I feel like it's, that's the only way he could maybe unless Venus like counters a it tiny bit from the jury. Time. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Soda first uh, first jury member, mayor of Ponderosa, and that's episode six and seven. So now let's scroll back through our notes and find some award worthy winners. There may be a lot to go through here because I feel like it was a pretty, I mean, both that these were the, the two best episodes of the season as much as I was yeah. upset with them, not just doing a straight merge. Um, you know, I'm pretty, I'm able to get over that pretty fast because it was the expectation. Um, and I think these two episodes were definitely the two best of the season. So let's start with quote. Um, and again, both episode six, seven, either one up for grabs. I will throw out a couple nominees to start. Uh, Kenzie, who is just the best she had when they first get on the beach together. I'm like a cast iron skillet that's been oiled up and seasoned. They're like store-bought nonstick right now. That's where we are at. Giddy up because we're about to play, baby. Um, in reference to them not having the tribal council experience that Vanu had. I really like that quote. Uh, when Mo does the Aubrey line to Q, 
if Mo thinks she could set me up, she could cancel Christmas. It ain't <laughs> happening. I might just, it might be a cultural, I, I don't understand, but I laughed either way. I didn't, I didn't understand how Christmas became a part of that, but it still was fun and a great quote. Still enjoyed that. And then I also had from episode seven, we have to shout out that Jeff shouts out Jelensky in honor yep. of Jelensky. We've been out here several minutes. That was funny and, you know, good as much as I don't want to get too much Jelinski vibes in the air because I don't need to see him on a returning season. And I feel like it's probably going to happen. Um, those were probably my main nominees. Uh, what what say you for quotes? We've got a Ben-ism, um, which was when he was trying to talk Sega Strong at the like quote-unquote merge feast. I will always air quote merge until they fix it. Yeah. Um, the limbo. When he's, I just yeah, like calling exactly. it limbo. Yeah. There you go. Uh, when he says, I know it sounds like I'm playing a cover. And just like <laughs> the Benisms of it all, like it makes total sense in the context of like, I know I'm just rehashing this, but we don't have a weak link. Um, and then also Mo, right when they got back from tribal of at least I'm a living idiot. Because she totally misjudged Tribal. Um, I did, of course, have Kenzie's um, nonstick comment. I've got Jeff with some shade at Soda for Are You New? When they were explaining the uh, <laughs> the challenge and like the merge and how it was all going to go down. And Soda knew exactly what was happening, but she just like miscalculated when it was going to be explained. Um, and then after the Tribal Division, like after you see the huge disparity... And Jeff says, like, it's super lopsided. I don't know if you caught it, but Charlie goes, yeah, it's tough for them, huh? And I just, like, cracked up because it's such a great throwaway line. And them rattling off their heights as they get named off <laughs> in contrast. Because I don't think, I think 5-7 was the tallest person there. And yeah, it went. Charlie it was the tallest one on there. Yeah, it ranged from. Yeah, it ranged from five seven to five foot nothing with Liz. I'm five four, so I would end up on that tribe. Um, and then from episode several, which is actually the name of the episode as well, I thought that Charlie was just throwing shade when he posted it on Instagram, and then I realized that was actually the title of the episode, uh, which made me very very happy. And I don't know. I must have some quotes. Cause I wrote, Oh yeah. Um, this is not the Q show, which I just loved. Um, true Ben being Ben. When Tim gets voted out, he just looks at Jeff. He's like, can I give Tim a hug real quick? And it was just a pure moment. Um, but Tim was so good. Cause like when Tim's rattling everyone off and then Q starts throwing shade at him, and then Tim just counters with, your daddy said, if you ain't in the fight, shut up. I died. That is my quote of the last two episodes, because it was just like, the timing was perfect. Yeah, uh, that was fantastic. We can definitely give the award to that. It, it, it needs to come from that elongated <laughs> moment anyways, because there was yeah. so many funny things being said back and forth. Um, yeah, oh, I... There was something I wanted to reference from one of your early nominees, but now I have forgotten it. So we will just move on. Yeah, that gets the award for quote. What about favorite moment? Oh, it was that Ben also had another very under the radar Benism. Uh, I forget what part it was even in reference to, but he said something to the effect of that doesn't rock, but this rips. Um, when, and before he had just used like this doesn't rock this does rock and this time he switched it up to like that doesn't rock this rips though and i was like okay nice i like you're evolving the the benisms a little bit here um moment of the episode i mean it's hard not to say episode seven like the entire the the game the during the challenge itself um you know combining the the alphabet game with the what's up jeff with with the Jelensky reference and, and everything else that all together um, that I think the couple different confrontational are the Maria Venus, the um, a few of the different NAMI conversations in general that were confrontational and interesting Tim or not Tim uh, Kenzie and Ben, obviously that moment 
Uh, I think we probably hit on most of them. Any of them stand out to you as the most award worthy? Um, I'm going to give so well, Soda is my MVP for episode six because she absolutely beasted that challenge. Um, and she said when they were doing their prep of, I need to go up the ball first and then I'll be able to pull you all up. And that whole, like the, the pyramid of women who are just like, they've constructed themselves into this really solid form to bring Charlie up. Like Soda killed it. Soda absolutely slayed it. And I know that as of the end of episode seven, she's not on here anymore. So I absolutely want to make sure that I give her my props for MVP of episode six. Um, The best moments, obviously like episode six, the smaller tribe rattling off their heights um, simply because I would end up in that tribe given that I am five, four. Um, But then Charlie antagonizing Q during the alphabet game and staring down the barrel of the camera um, in a true Jim or Tim, depending on which office you prefer. It's so good. And he did it again too. Like he did that one when he said Baltimore and then just stared down the barrel of the camera. But also when Maria and Venus are having that conversation, he has this sideways glance to the camera because he's just behind them the entire time that they're having that back and forth. And I now kind of want to go back through and just like pull all of those staring down the barrel of the camera moments from Charlie because they're so good. And there's usually one or two an episode and he does it so well. Um, I actually wrote it down twice. I was like, <laughs> yeah, Charlie side eye to the camera. Um, oh yeah. This one is actually more to do with my close captioning than anything else. But when Soda said Charlie's name in a British accent, it said British accent, Charlie. And then the next line that she said, it said regular accent. And then whatever it was, she said, <laughs> and I was like, you didn't need to specify <laughs> That that well, was back. You have to you have to know when it switches back. <laughs> if they if they said you know for if for anyone who needs the closed caption, true, you know they they got to let you know that it switched back to regular again. Yeah, so regular accent. Um, but yeah, I think I think Charlie gets like my best moment of just specifically the alphabet game. Yeah, but then that, if that's yeah for sure that's yeah. the definite of all of that elongated great moment that is the best moment of all of it and the most well done by him breaking the fourth wall and everything so good um best and worst gameplay i would say you know as far as best goes again charlie charlie realizing basically like to duck to that he's he's not you know to he's safe and don't don't press anything just be happy that you're safe hunter not playing his idol um and reading and confidently knowing that he can get through without playing it and venus for you know is the one that gets gets the person out she wanted to get out i think those are the clear kind of best you know they're all pretty high level obvious ones but are you know obviously very good quality moves worst i didn't really have because like you know i'd had like charlie saying uh, telling Venus right away that he voted, but like as we discussed, it probably was the right strategy and certainly played out to be the right strategy. Um, so I think worst strategy. I mean, is it just is Q and Venus both being too aggressive? But it's Q gets the award because he's the one that doesn't have someone to tell him, or wouldn't be willing maybe to listen if someone tells him to calm it down the way Venus seems to listen to Maria and then they obviously work together. So uh, early results are good of her, you know, making the adjustment. I think between Q, you know, yelling at Charlie on the beach more or less. um, And later, you know, basically everything he does throughout the episodes of just, you know, upsetting Tiff. The fact that we get Tiff and Kenzie off on their own saying, we're getting tired of this guy and laughing about the different moments or whatever. Like that's not a good sign when your two allies are doing that. So I'd probably have to give him the worst strategy for the, the entirety of it and best strategy, you know, the three, the three obvious picks. Yeah. Um, I would say best move. There's not really one for episode six. Cause it was such a, like a, it was a cluster of a bunch of different stuff. Um, 
no one really like made a, a solid move. Um, but I will say like best move, Maria circling back to Venus and just being like, look, this is why we didn't jive moving forward. If you want to work with me, this is how we've got to do it. Um, blindsiding soda as much as i absolutely adore soda she is such a huge social threat that that was an opportunity to get her out and i think where that group succeeded the other group failed because one of my worst moves is the fact that yanu was so focused on breaking up siga that they missed a super clear shot at hunter and they might not get another one um and also of like q flip-flopping 24 7 trying to <laughs> trying to get everybody out basically at the exact same time. And then other than that, just like, like you said, Venus going really hard, um, trying to get her move going, despite the fact that it's totally like, it's a good move. It's just the, the delivery left a little bit to be de desired. And also Tim just not filling in Maria at all about this Alliance that he's like sort of committed her to, but then I also understand what he said when he did talk to her, which was, I didn't want to force your hand. I wanted you to be able to make the decision for yourself. But, like, tell her that there's a decision to be made would be helpful. And also Tim wanting to go Sega Strong and really pushing for Sega Strong, but then ultimately being the one who threw out Mo's name. Um, I, yeah. I'm yeah, going to give I... it, yeah. I'll give it to Tim for for the Maria thing. Um, yeah. He does go home. So, uh, yeah. you know, last time you can get an award, even the one that you don't want to get. So fair enough. As for MVP. So you said soda for six. What about for episode seven? I, I, would, I think, I think Charlie, like being I, able I, to read the, I mean, He's probably second to me. I think Venus has to maybe get my MVP for episode seven. Uh, yeah. Not just she does obviously get the credit at the end, but is kind of a focal point throughout um, because of that building that storyline up um, and having the moment, you know, with Maria and everything else. I feel like she was as definitely as much screen time, if not the most screen time of the episode and uh, had the payoff of the story and everything else. So I think I'm going to have to go with Venus for episode seven. I will I will back your play on that because you're absolutely right. Like Venus was really in a bad situation, even more so than Charlie, because her own tribe was trying to get her out, and she still managed to make that work in her favor. She was receptive enough, whether she listens to it or not, to have that conversation with Maria, which is huge. And to ask she asked clarifying questions as well of when Maria was like, This is how you came across, and she's like, When did I come across like that? So that she's clearly at least gaining the information, whether she like takes it and runs with it. Um, Venus, definitely. And then I will just say another best moment is Tevin's re initial recovery uh, in that challenge, because I fully thought that he was going off that thing. And to recover like that was pretty badass. Yeah, if he would have won, that would have been up there yeah. for sure. All right, Soda and Venus are your MVPs. And now let's wrap things up with a couple prediction questions and some power rankings. First things first, who goes home next is the easy, obvious prediction question to ask. Let's assume that maybe finally they all are, it's one individual immunity and everyone's up for grabs. Who do you think goes home next? Um... I would like to say Q, just because I would like to see it happen at this point. Um, I th I think that, like it could happen, but he's still pretty insulated. Um, I worry about people like Kenzie, because she's building such a strong social game, and she's been safe these last two votes. Plus, you have the Banu of it all, where he said like she could basically carry on a conversation and befriend a rock at this point. And that's what she does for a living is she makes those, those small conversations and she makes them stick. And she even said it and she had her whole tribe randomly give her a round of applause at the tribal that wasn't even about her. And she had immunity. There was no way she could go home, but they took a moment to praise her. And I, th I think that like, that's almost a, a death sentence for her game for getting to the yeah, end. Yeah. That that's you. I mean, there's nothing she could 
she didn't like spur it on. They no. they did it. It's not like she could be like, don't do that um, or anything. But yeah, that was not a good moment no. for her. Um, I'm, I'm hopefully it's the mixed feelings of like you should allow that to feel really great and uh, deserved, but also be horrified that it's happening for your game's sake. I think Q is definitely up there. I also think Tevin is now maybe in a yeah. tough spot potentially because I do think Hunter will be again, this Hunter having the idol is why he is not um, in the running for this position. I think, cause I do think he will become the uh, even if he doesn't win and is yet again, you know, doesn't win the first few here immunities. I think if he still stood out enough in the group stage that um, people are going to start being like, Hey, any, we'd have to, vote for him as early and often as possible until we get him out because he could win two or three of these in a row. Um, so yeah, I'm, I think Tevin and Q are in the toughest spots, but uh, I think it's going to be a pretty decent reset now that we've had the biggest, bl- the first big blind side, true blind side and Tim who was kind of whether he like had, he w- he wasn't calling the shots for Sega but they were allowing his voice to be as big as anyone within that tribe. And so now that those two have been removed, I feel like there will be a reset and a first, our first actual, Hey, what if we didn't just stick to the tribe lines here? What if clearly everyone's open now to, to breaking those down. So it's tough to say, but I think Q and Tevin are maybe most vulnerable right now before we do the power rankings. Who do you want in the final three? We've both, uh, you know, episode five and six saw us lose our favorites, Jem and Mo, yep. respectively. And so while we both do have our winner's pick still live, which is fantastic, Tiff Very and true. Maria, um, if you had to pick as far as just favorites, who you want to see sitting at the end right now, who would be the final three of your of your choice, of your liking? The people that I want to see explain their game would be not even Tevin. explain their game. Just your just you're final the biggest fan of rooting for. Yeah. Cause mine is definitely uh Venus has to be there for me. And I think Charlie has to be there for me now. And then it's a complete toss up. I'm kind of rooting for those two the most probably and then Maria, Tevin, and Hunter all have kind of equal footing as far as rooting interests for me go. Um, and there's no, I mean, there's no one I'm really like rooting against or rooting anything, against. but those, those five kind of stand, have a slight footing above others if I had to pick who I'm kind of rooting for. But Charlie and Venus are the two that I'm like, I yeah. would really, I'm really wanting, wanting them to get to the end um, just off of personal subjective taste. Um, yeah, do you have are you do you have any favorites now that basically Mo has been eliminated? Actually, then Liz. I should actually yeah. yeah. I want Liz, Venus, and Charlie would be my dream final three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people um, that I that's, would be thrilled one of them gets to win. That's that's actually like pretty much mine. Um I think that Liz, Charlie, Venus, Ben, Tevin make the most dynamic final five in that I would be very interested to see who comes out on top. Um, And I narrow it down to five simply because I can't narrow it down any more than that. Like I'm like you, I want to see Venus. Like I want to see Venus in the end and I want to see Charlie in the end because they both managed to like dodge fairly big, I guess bullets towards them that they've just been able to sort of maneuver really well. Um, I'd be interested to see how they go against each other. I just want to see how many Benisms can fit into one final tribal council, and I'm here for it. Tevin, I think, has a really interesting game and a really interesting perspective on Survivor, and that's why I really want to see him at the end. And Liz is like this sleeper agent that I think that everyone has sort of discounted her slash thinks that they can almost take her to the end, And I think that that is an absolutely terrible move for anybody who thinks that that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you on that. So then let's talk instead of subjective, slightly more objective. 
give me let's do i don't even know did we do power rankings for the first time last we didn't did we the last time we um, spoke? i don't know that we did we might have and, we might have skipped last one but we did the one before yeah i'm trying to pull up the outline here great podcasting pulling open notes and things um no i don't we didn't actually so this will be the first time we we did um so if you had to say top five right now uh three to five whatever wherever you can find a cutoff of best position to win this game right now um i've got mine i can go first if you need me to if you need some more time i didn't actually prepare us for any of this final section here no worries um but if you're ready you can go ahead first yeah um so i've got maria tiff this is five Charlie. to one or one to five uh this is one to five okay you got maria at the top okay yeah so Same. maria at the top tiff behind her charlie liz tevin Interesting. Okay. We have a complete 50 50 split of similarity in not. So I also have Marie at the top. I, I feel real. I'm starting to get really, really some thoughts that I could have fi- I've picked a winner's yeah, pick on Survivor, me too. which I feel like is an impossible thing to, <laughs> to happen is because it's completely and utterly whatever 18, uh, you know, divided, one eighteenth chances is, is is it's a true shot in the dark scenario here, um, but I think she's in a great spot of like medium threat level, which is where you kind of want to be. Has now had a hand, but not the leading. You know, was in the passenger seat of the first big move of the game of getting Soda out, but was not the driver, which is an ideal spot to be, and has built has a solid of a number like one relationship with her and Charlie as anyone has a solid of a, like I've been in this Tevin Q Hunter thing that they like trust me or want to work with me. And I've, I've, I've never not worked with them, but we haven't had to do anything where I like broke any other lines or anything. I just think she's in fantastic position. And then we had two of the other four, the same. I had Charlie Hunter Venus Tiff as my the rest of my top five so we had charlie and tiff both in there um i i think he's just him and maria together are in just a fantastic position and are both probably going to wait until the last second to go at each other i don't feel like they're a, like there's i don't think they're a ricard and shan of like there's eight or nine of us left we got to do this now i think they're much more of a um of kind of the re before of last season of like no like this is going to be the last last i think they're the malcolm and denise i think it was accurate i think that that was totally accurate when it was said that they are totally a malcolm and denise sort of alliance did those two go all the way to the end or like the almost very last, like um, last vote last last minute okay yeah i think that's yeah spot on and then I I have Hunter on there just because I think he can win immunities and he currently has an idol and good relationships. So while his threat level might be high, I just feel like there's a scenario where we look up three episodes from now and we're like, he won two immunities and he played his idol the other time and he went from 10 to six, you know, very, it was always, you know, was never actually up for grabs. And then I think Venus is now maybe better positioned than Tevin or Liz uh, as far as the other three Nami. So she gets in. And I think Tiff is the best position of the three Vanu. It's hard to say K- Kenzie or Tiff who's positioned better. But I think just based off like editing, we've been led to believe that Kenzie will at some point maybe be targeted for like too socially good at this. Yeah. Um, and so that one's kind of more of an editing thing than anything of like, I feel like Tiff's being positioned as the the best case uh here so yeah but i like i love that we both have maria Man, uh, maria Mari- maria's good like maria i think maria is a perfect mix of heidi from 44 and denise we got heidi uh heidi was on uh was the guest on uh pod is spoken this week with tyson oh yeah um yeah which it was a big moment of like how fast these seasons run back to back to back and whatever and how they're all just like meld together and how shitty my memory is of uh, <laughs> the moment uh they you know he does like a well like welcomes her to the show but i always fast forward through the first couple of minutes before until they like actually get to talking right so i fast forward and then and i missed the like intro and therefore him saying her name 
and I just started and it, she was talking and I was like, I know who this person is. I could picture this person. Zero idea what their name was. Zero <laughs> idea which season they were on or whatever. And then I just started like trying to go through my brain and I was like, I can remember like five people. If yeah. well, I can remember five people that I could say they were this person, they were on this season and this is how far they got. I could name you 70 of the people from the modern era, but I would be like, uh, earlier. So like 41 or two or three, not 44 or five or six or whatever. And yep. I, I think they got to this far, but I don't really remember or whatever. It's just so hard. I keep placing 43. I keep placing the cast of 43 in the 44 slot. Thinking that like Jesse and Cody and Owen and, and Dwight and them played more recently than they have. And then that's 43. I, Those people you just yeah. named were 43. Who, and then 44. I, yeah. And 44, uh, for whatever reason in my head, 43 and 44 are flipped so that like Jam Jam and Carolyn and Carson are in my head 43, despite the fact that I know that they're 44, but I always misplace those seasons. Yeah. And, and then, yeah. So, Tika was 44. Reba was 45, which we just watched. Yes, that's how that's the easier way to almost keep it keep it in line, but yeah, it's all very tough. And uh yeah, I'm going to get my winner's pick correct for the season and it's going to be amazing and I'm going to celebrate uh a lot every week until it hopefully happens. So, go Maria. And yeah, that's a borderline two hours worth of two episodes of Survivor for you. We will be back next week to cover hopefully the first true merged individual game episode of the season. That'll be episode eight. Thanks for everyone for listening and make sure to hit that subscribe button. DMs are open. Both of our Instagrams are listed in the show notes. If you have questions for us or want to talk Survivor or the challenge or anything else, um, use those links there and oh. uh, we will talk to you next week. Oh, we have a question. Oh, we have, damn it. Yeah. We erase so, everything I just said. <laughs> we already answered the other question, which was about if we thought that Mo could have done any better, had she said what she said on the beach versus at tribal, we kind of dug into that, but in the preview, um, Jeff says like, this hasn't happened before. What like at tribal, any idea what that could be? Uh, has anyone, there's been a scenario before where none of the votes counted, right? Yes. Okay. Cause that would be my first thing is like both idols are somehow played or whatever. And like, yeah, all no votes counted. Um, is there a way where it somehow it ends up being like only one person gets, I mean, if they split into assuming all of them are at tribal council together again, which means 11 people are left, right? So 11 people are at tribal council. There's no way for it to be like one person gets to decide all of this, like on the spot or something. I have no idea. I don't know. Like, with the shot in the dark, we've had one work. Well, we've had two work technically. Um, one is at it a time. Yeah, one at a time. Could we get two people play their shot in the dark and they're both? I don't safe? think it is. I think or is they're it drawing a, from the same bag? They're drawing from the same bag, but do they reset every time? Because they like you've got your stack of parchment. So if one person, because they technically have a one in six shot, so I yeah, feel they're that both supposed to have a one in one in six. Shot, six. Yeah, which technically well it's really into probabilities where it depends how you do the draw if they like here's the bag of six we draw two of them out and then open yeah. them you both had a one in six chance versus a we drew one out we looked at it yeah. and then we drew again you no longer on the second draw have a one and technically have a one you you do and you don't have yeah. a one in six chance um so yeah it's whether they if multiple people play a shot in the dark do you basically get two bags to draw from exactly six. um and yeah i guess it def it's never happened that two shots in the dark work at the same time um no. yeah i that, that's the only thing i could even think of that would be there's no we can definitively say this has never happened before I my best guess is that whatever he says has actually happened before, or is as interesting as the edit as the trailer wants it to be, because um, <laughs> I just don't know what scenario it would be. Because I just don't think I don't think two people are playing a shot in the dark, and I don't think two people are hitting the shot in the dark at the same time. No, um, I 
in my true snarky fashion responded when uh when jen asked and i said that the thing that's never happened before is jeff acknowledged that the last two episodes were not actually a merge and this was the first actual portion of the merge <laughs> yeah that would be it good. Did he hasn't done that before. <laughs> but yeah it'll, it'll be interesting i mean you've got two immunity idols that are hidden right now there's potential for a third because there's technically a third idol somewhere that hasn't been claimed so you could there, have do we know that for sure there was there's usually it usually goes hers. back into play and if not there's usually another idol that comes back well merge time she hers went back into play and they were then had like one more day on the sega beach yeah um and so if, if it was in play they didn't get that one right um and it would have been left on that beach so it's whether they have put one on the new merge beach or not or maybe they will now um maybe they have yeah. too many advantages and no one can vote i don't because that's not there's again <laughs> there's only two idols so unless they give out a bunch of idols or something um, where everybody has to go on the journey well there could be two idols and someone maybe two people win individual immunity and so that's four people that are safe shot in the but dark. then and yeah, if someone plays a shot in the dark and like gets it, then that's five. But unless they split into two tribes again, and there's a tribe of five at a tribal council, and somehow it's all five people that could end up, which couldn't happen because how could both two immunity winners? Yeah, I have no idea. I guess we'll find out next week. And I, my only hope is that it actually is something that we haven't seen before, that is never seen before, and not Jeff either not knowing his own show's history or them, you know the editors just trying to build something up that isn't all all that yeah you know as great as it seems like it could be based on the trailer so maybe soda gets we shall see from the jury yeah maybe there's somehow a tie well no because ties just go to rocks <laughs> and like there's yeah. no way to tie rock drawing i don't know maybe yeah maybe soda maybe soda can't help herself and starts talking and jeff's like you're not allowed to talk and she just keeps talking and he's like you're gonna get, get booted out. from this you're you're not going to be allowed to be here and she's like i don't want to be here and she leaves maybe that happens yeah yeah i don't know because there's but yeah i guess i don't think that's happened before right so no. there you go that's our best guess is two shots <laughs> in the dark or soda decides she doesn't have any interest in being on just the jury rage quits and the talks jury. her way off of the island of fiji so yeah sure that's that's our best guesses but we'll be back next week to discuss it whatever it is until then everyone have a wonderful weekend and week